Indistractable by Near AL. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and this is Sugar and I want to make, well actually both of us want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal because I don't want to do it alone and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal to make sure to smash that like button. I hadn't heard of this author before hearing about his previous book Hooked. Seeing it all over my Instagram feed about the, pr the construction of habit forming products. So I always tell my Instagram followers in my stories all the time of what book I'm listening to. This sometimes gets me in contact with the author. And you would think the author of a book called Indistractable doesn't spend all that much time on social media or at least Instagram. Cal Newport, writer of Digital Minimalism, seems to be completely off the grid. But I was surprised at how quickly and frequently the author actually responded to me before doing this review. The author, lecturer, and investor near a all seems to be on some sort of a mission nowadays. Many large tech companies have praised his previous book, it is on the shelves of many of their offices, and many of them have used its knowledge to further develop products that drive deeper, stickier habits into the grooves of our minds. But here's the diminishing marginal return engaged kicker. Apple, for example, is one company that realized, hey, if we don't get under control how addictive our devices are, we're going down. So they put together features like screen time, where you use your phone to actually limit the amount of time that you spend using your phone. And that's just one company. So the author is like, wow, I need a book for people to help them kind of manage the content consequences of what hooked has maybe helped these companies do a little bit easier. Granted, it's not like this guy is the sole driver of distraction in the digital age. I mean, this has been going on for what, almost two decades now? I am a really strong advocate for these companies. I am incredibly fascinated by what they do, but I understand there are, are a lot of interestingly drastic existential consequences to the value that it offers the world. And that's a huge reason I make these videos and review books like this. I am desperately scared that if we do not learn to grow and develop ourselves in this day and age, we will stagnate into very deep, dark places. Similar to the ones, kind of, maybe worse in a lot of ways, that we lived in when we first got here. And no company is gonna help us, and no company is gonna do that for us. They might help us a little, but we have to do it for ourselves and each other. So I swear I'm on this guy's side. Why should megalithic corporations keep these secrets to themselves? Shouldn't we be using the same science that makes social media and video games so engaging to build products that help people live better lives? You could argue that about social media, but social media, Let's face it, the only, what value does social media offer other than helping us connect with each other? Because distractions on social media can get very out of hand to the point where it makes us feel like our decisions are actually out of our control. The fact is, if you are not able to manage distraction right now, or at some point, you are probably going to be manipulated your whole life by like time-wasting diversions. The good news is what this book is about. We have the ability to adapt to these circumstances. By the way, something that I really like about the author's mindset with this is that he is an insider. He has helped these companies He's actually invested in some of them too. So it's not like he doesn't understand both sides of the coin. He has this unbiased demeanor to his writing style. In this review, I'm going to talk about each part of the book, what I thought of it, and some things about this book reminded me vaguely of uh, Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. So I'll go over those two, what I liked about the book. And since there wasn't all that much that I didn't like, I'm going to talk about some negative reviews of the book and whether I agree with them. Part one is mastering what, external, uh, internal triggers. Allegedly, a lot of distraction has to do with pain management. When we think that we are seeking pleasure, we are actually trying to free ourselves from the pain of wanting. Isn't that weird? I have never heard anyone explain so passionately and enthusiastically the deep reasons for distraction and procrastination. I mean, the first part talks so much about like the bait, the grand bait and switch of mother nature. How is time management pain management? Why are we never satisfied for actually long periods of time? He talks about surfing the urge, exploring healthier things that you could be doing instead, like smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm if you haven't done so already. There are not that many ideas in this book that I've really heard before. I mean, 
The contents, they help the book separate itself strikingly from others. With the general exception of much of part two, where he explains how to make time for what you actually want to do. This is where I started hearing from talked about concepts like implementation intention. Uh, I heard James Clear talk about that in Atomic Habits, which everyone knows Atomic Habits. I mean, come on. At first I thought this book would be like a good old batch of Cal Newport, but with similar effectiveness, a little bit less persuasion, and a little bit more sunshine. And the book does read like that. It reads like a more high energy digital minimalism. The stuff where I heard, I, I was like, is this a repetition? Am I paying twice for this information? That ended pretty quickly. There were a couple other parts of the book I swear I've heard more than once before, but the rest of the book I like to definitely think made up for it. Part three is hackbacks. Very unheard of tips. <laughs> Like, really unheard of. Not sending emails until hours after you write them. Treating group chats like saunas. He also talks about how to hack back meetings. The smartphone. Who doesn't want to know how to save time on their smartphone? He also talks about something that was really interesting called multi-channel multitasking. People say multitasking is ineffective, other people disagree, and they are convinced that it gets more done. This is just a totally different perspective on multitasking and one that I didn't even know was mine for quite some time. Part four is pacts. Which is also, I think, talked about in Atomic Habits, now that I think of it. Pacts are like a way that, you know, it's kind of like a social pressure that we put on ourselves to stick to doing what we say we will do. But here's something I didn't hear from Atomic Habits. Have you ever thought of betting money? <laughs> betting money on your ability to quit a bad habit? Or better yet, if you think that's, if you think that's a catch, burning money to make sure that you stick to a good habit. Part five is how to make your workplace more indistractable. This part highlighted to me some solutions, but what really stood out is the consequences of distraction in the workplace. Once again, and this is probably my favorite thing about the book, he does a spectacular job at discussing these topics in a brighter, far less ominous nature than, you know, Professor Cal Newport does in Digital Minimalism. I don't want to say, I don't want to make it sound like Digital Minimalism is a bad book. It was a super dope book, but I'm really trying to highlight that this book has something that that book really does not. Digital Minimalism was dope. People seem to overlook or disregard maybe how he talks about these companies. I swear Newport is convinced that Facebook is like this evil cancer that's trying to manipulate your brain waves and suck your soul out of your skeleton and throw it into a meat grinder or something. <laughs> what? Meanwhile, this dude is like, here, we have the ability to adapt to circumstances that have us pushing our buttons just a little too much and we can help each other out with it too. Part six is how to raise indistracted children. This is like the biggest differentiator. Differentiator, I think that's the word. Maybe this is just my future father figure self talking, but any book that talks about an ideal set of tools or a mindset, valuable, useful information that says, oh, and here's how you can teach this to your kids. Bless your soul, you are a wonderful person for writing something like that. And I heard this chapter and I'm like, damn, this dude's daughter is going to be super good at what she does when she's older. For instance, we cannot fix the problems of kids spending so much time on smartphones. Unless we first look at it clearly. He says that parents don't need to believe that technology is evil to help kids manage distraction. And school certainly doesn't teach kids how to overcome distraction. If it does, I really hope it's changed. I have ADHD. Perhaps clearly, I was diagnosed before the DSM-5 came out. The only thing I did well in school was get consistently bad grades in just about all my classes except gym, which was like 90% attendance. School plays a huge part too in this situation, but his whole perspective on the entire like debate is really, really just well-rounded. Cause he explains why smartphones are so beneficial to kids, which by the way has to do with autonomy and freedom and competence and relatedness and connection versus all these strict rules, many of which actually include inconvenience of, and interestingly enough, against socially engaging with each other. So it's almost like school encourages kids to want to spend time on their phones. All these pissed off teachers and parents, if you can't stand this, 
I would check the book out just for this part. Chapter seven is how to have indistractable relationships, and it kind of just goes from there. What did the negative reviews say, and do I agree with them? A one-star review written by Erica says, there's nothing new. The same, turn your technology off and be present, and then unrealistic strategies for work. Unrealistic? Erica, what do you mean by unrealistic? A few reviews questioned. One of them actually bashed the author and is saying, hey, meditation didn't really work out for me, so I'm not gonna talk about it in this book. Perhaps the author wasn't too mindful of his own using mindfulness as a technique to handle distraction while claiming that he's not going to talk about mindfulness meditation. One person seemed particularly insulted by this. Hey John, if you use mindfulness meditation to combat binge eating and it works out for you, that's amazing. You have every reason to be proud of yourself. I'm certainly proud, go you. But John's review did not seem to just come from someone who practices mindful meditation and self-hypnosis, rather someone who practices mindful meditation and self-hypnosis and somehow manages to negatively react with his ego to one ugly tree while refusing to tell everybody, hey, the rest of this forest is quite beautiful and colorful, wow. Quotes. The time you plan to waste is not wasted time. My life is one long escape from myself. If I know how you spend your time, then I know what will become of you. You can't call something a distraction unless you know what it's distracting you from. Just because your phone can seemingly do everything doesn't mean it should. Direction one. I recommend this book simply for adults in the digital age, especially for the second last and or last part, for parents of a young child or children who are affected deeply, whether they know it or not, by social tech disruption and have just wasted far too much time on irrelevant distractions in their personal and work lives. Come on, that's gotta describe at least like 60 something percent of us. Direction two, if you like this book, I have never really heard this much of an optimistic approach in a book to focus at work and healthier, higher, more fulfilling productivity in the digital age, but a darker, more hardcore approach is probably digital minimalism. Newport is just very, and there's not, not that there's that much wrong with this, but he's very cynical compared to AOL. But what he makes up for with his cynicism, I'd check out my review of digital minimalism for more information. Indistractable by Near AOL. There's a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you wanna check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know on Instagram and also let me know if you check out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because people watch, uh, this is, I don't even know how long this video is going to be and people watch all the way to this part and they don't subscribe and I'm not sure why that is. But if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.